mercy and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The fortress of God is His church, and it is built upon the foundation of His Word. This Word. The Word that He has handed to us through the prophets, through the Psalms, through the apostles. The Word given to us as Scripture. And today is Reformation Sunday, a day where we celebrate how Luther, on the foundation of Scripture, on the foundation of the Word of God, stood up against the authority at that time, the authority that said that we know that you can't be saved by works of your own, but maybe if you buy this indulgence, that'll help you out a little bit. Or maybe if you work just a little bit harder, that'll help you out a little bit. Luther was reading Scripture and he heard the words that Paul wrote. When Paul wrote that the wage of sin is death, but the free gift of God, free gift, it doesn't take an indulgence, it doesn't take money. The free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus, His Son. On that foundation, that foundation given to us in God's Word, Luther challenged the authority of the world, the church. The authority that said that the papacy, that the Pope and the cardinals and the bishops that they could do whatever they wanted, and they could sell as many indulgences as they wanted, and they could use that money for themselves or, or build these big grand cathedrals. And you know, there's nothing wrong with building a new church or building a big grand cathedral. But there is something wrong with tricking people into giving you that money by selling them salvation, which is not ours to give, but it comes through Jesus Christ, his only son. Luther was a monk and he would study the Word of God, right? And he would read through the Psalms as, as most monks do and they pray them, they sing them, they chant them. And he was reading through Scripture and he discovered something grand. The sweetness of the words that we, no matter how horrible we can be as sinners, are forgiven in Christ Jesus. And so it's with that in mind today that we take a look at a similar situation that we face in our world. Our earthly authority today, our governmental authority, they're not always biblical. They're not standing on the basis of Scripture as we would hope them to be. And yet, we know that we have to elect someone to be president, to lead us as a nation. And so as we looked at last week, we looked at how we were going to have to elect someone and how we are sinners electing another sinner, and yet we know that we are forgiven in Christ. And that no matter what happens in the election, no matter whom we elect, no matter whom we vote for, that we can vote on the basis of Scripture. We can vote knowing that God's will will be done and that His kingdom will come regardless. And that no matter how horrible a sinner I am, or our two candidates are, that we are still forgiven through His Son, Jesus Christ. And we said that, that last week we said that neither candidate is 100% biblical, are they? They may view life differently than the Bible does. They may view marriage differently than the Bible does. They may view uh, the opportunities to feed the hungry and clothe the poor and take care of the sick differently than the Bible does. And yet we can pick one of those issues as voters, knowing that we aren't going to find a candidate who believes 100% everything that we want them to believe about all those issues. We can pick one. And we can vote on that issue as we vote and approach this election. On the basis of Scripture, we can vote affirming life, not only for the unborn, Born, but for those who are just days away from their last breath, we can vote for, uh, for caring for social ministries and for feeding those kids, those kids that are in our own neighborhoods and backyards who aren't going to eat until tomorrow at lunchtime. We can vote with those things in mind, and it may be a different candidate than you normally would have voted for, but you can vote 
knowing that you voted on the foundation of Scripture as Luther stood on that foundation when he reformed the church. As we look at that today, as we think about that today, and with that in mind, we're going to take a look at Psalm 46 together. We're going to go through that together today. The psalmist begins with the words, God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in time of trouble. What a beautiful phrase that is. He begins with the assumption that God is in control. And that no matter what happens on this earth, God will always be in control. Listen to what he says next. God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble, in control. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth gives way, though the mountains are moved into the heart of the sea, though the waters, they roar and they foam, and the mountains tremble at their swelling, God is still in control. The psalmist notices that the earth is in chaos. He notices that there is destruction upon the earth, and yet he finds comfort knowing that God is our fortress through it all. I reminded you of that text a little bit ago, that text that says, for the wage of sin is death. Notice how here in the psalm, the psalmist, 500 to 1,000 years before Christ, is already witnessing the wage of sin, which is death and destruction upon the earth. We normally think of, of this kind of language as final day language. Stuff that we should be looking for now as we wait for Jesus to return. And yet, 1, 500 to 1,000 years before Christ, he sees it. He sees that sin has come into the earth and it has impacted the earth so much that the earth is giving way. And that the seas are roaring and foaming. And that even the mountains tremble at their swelling. He sees the chaos. He sees the wars breaking out. He sees famine upon the earth. And yet through all of that, he recognizes that God is his refuge and strength through the destruction. Notice too how the psalmist doesn't begin with the words, God is my refuge and strength. Or that he doesn't begin with, he is your refuge and strength. But he is our refuge and strength. God is not a fortress just for me and me alone. But He is a fortress for His church. He is a fortress for His people. And we, who make up the body of Christ, the church, have that promise of a fortress in God, in Christ. We know that as the earth gives way, God is not just protecting a few people. He is not just protecting His favorite people. He is protecting His people, His church, His body. And we see that same chaos today, don't we? As we look at this psalm and we see what's going on, and we too recognize that God is our fortress within this chaos. We see the chaos of a hurricane that, that we escaped from, but maybe some of our friends in the coastal cities did not. Those in Haiti certainly did not. And the hurricane that struck, or the hurricane, and then the earthquake that struck Haiti just before. All of the damage that they have seen, we are seeing that today. Fires and droughts throughout our land, famines, maybe not so much in our country, but in other countries. And whether we're in famine or not, there are still children in this city who are not being fed. We see the death and destruction and decay of the world. And yet we have this promise that God through this is our fortress. We even see the chaos in the upcoming election. The debates have been chaotic. The comments made before and after them have been chaotic. They haven't been necessarily the most friendly things that we've seen. A lot of Muslims, and we've talked about this last time, we are sinners, voting for sinners, we know that. But there is chaos around it. And the media won't let us forget it. 
maybe some of us on our own Facebook pages and, and Twitter accounts or, or just in our conversations won't let others forget it either. We know there is chaos. And yet amidst the chaos, God is in control. He is a fortress in the chaos. And he will not let his church, his body, his people be destroyed. Listen to what comes next. The psalmist writes, there is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of her, and she shall not be moved. God will help her when the morning dawns. The nations rage, the kingdoms totter. He utters his voice, the earth melts. The Lord of hosts is with us, the God of Jacob is our fortress. What a beautiful text. What a beautiful thing to say. He acknowledges that there is chaos in the world. The very first line before this part says that the waters roar and they foam. And yet God right away takes those roaring and foaming waters and He makes them a gentle, gentle stream through which we are nourished, refreshed, and are cleansed. God takes the roaring waves that are on the ocean have you been to the ocean on a stormy day or a stormy afternoon or just before the storm arrives where the waves are being thrown all around and you can't really go out and swim because the tide's too high, the, the currents are too strong, and the waves are, 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 have a six, eight foot swell. <coughs> God has taken those roaring waters and made them a gentle stream. God, in the midst of chaos, as the, as the psalmist writes, takes the chaos and makes it a place of nourishment and refreshment for his people. And notice how God, as the psalmist writes, the psalmist acknowledges that God is not some far off God. He's not way out there in the universe. He's not, he's not some uh, bird's eye view God just watching creation from afar. But He dwells with them. He dwells in the city with them. His fortress is Him. And He is with His people. He is in His body. He is in this body, the church. And that's a promise we have through Jesus, isn't it? Jesus says, where two or three are gathered, I am there with them. He says that uh, He is in with and under the bread and wine in our Lord's Supper, so as we partake of that feast today, we know that Christ is physically present with us. We know that God dwells among us. We know that we have Him in our presence. And that as God sees the chaos in the world and He sees the destruction, He provides for us a firm foundation, a firm fortress. And as we look at this uh, upcoming election, we know that God will be with us. And as we look at the chaos of it, we know that, that, that God will turn the chaos into peace. And it may not be something that we see in our lifetime. It may not be something we see in the next four years. But we know that God uses chaotic government to bring peace for His people. The psalmist continues. He writes, Come, behold the works of the Lord. He has brought desolations on the earth. He makes war cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear, and He burns the chariots with fire. You know, the psalmist is continuing on that thought, right? He's continuing down that same train of thought that we were just on, that God will take the chaos and He will use it to bring peace for His people. As we look throughout Scripture, we see how God uses pagan kings, whether it's Pharaoh, whether it's uh, uh, Xerxes, Cyrus, Nebuchadnezzar, Caesar. He uses all of those kings to save and benefit His people his church in the most unexpected ways. 
God not only uses that chaos to bring peace, but as our psalmist writes, God brings that chaos in order to bring about peace. Notice what the psalmist says. He says, come, behold, the works of the Lord, how he has brought desolations of the earth. Right there in that line, the psalmist is, is acknowledging that everything he's written about before that point, the point where he wrote that, that uh, the earth is giving way and that the seas are fo ro uh, foaming and, and roaring, all of those things are the works of God. They are the works of the Lord. And that can be a frightening thought to us. But it recalls in our mind that we have a just God. A God who is faithful and just. And that the wage of sin is death. And how God brings His justice through that wage to His people. So that as we look out to the world and we see the death and decay of the world, we know that we are sinful people. And we know that sin has impacted this world in such a horrible way that God needed to send His Son to be our Savior in order to restore this broken creation so that we could have eternal life in His name. The psalmist notes right away that these works are God's. But then he continues. And he shows us just how God uses these works to bring about peace. He says that God uses these works to make war cease to the ends of the earth, to break the bow, to shatter the spear, and burn the chariots with fire. And as we noted in our, in our Bible study this morning, that God doesn't just put an end to wars, but He destroys the instruments for them. <coughs> he destroys the <coughs> instruments for them. Putting an end to future wars as well. God has taken this chaos that He has brought upon this earth and used it for peace for His people that dwell in His fortress. So here, as we look out to the world today, we see the chaos. We see the desolation on the earth. And we don't know why God allowed it to happen. We don't know why God at this time and at this place allowed earthquakes or hurricanes. But we can pray to God and we can say, God, let your will be done and let your kingdom come. And we can ask Him to bring His, use His justice to bring peace. And isn't that the opportunity we have today? We have the opportunity as God's body, as His church, to be used for peace. We have an opportunity to share uh, the gifts that God has given us to help those in Haiti rebuild. We have an opportunity to share the gifts that God has given us to feed those kids that won't eat today. We have an opportunity to share the gifts that God has given us to clothe those who have no clothes and to care for those who are sick. As we see the chaos in the world, God has provided shelter for us as our fortress, founded on His Word. And we have an opportunity to be His body for ministry in His kingdom. And the psalmist continues, Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted on the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. And here the psalmist, psalmist, he brings us to Christ. He brings us to Jesus. And you think, well, this is a psalm. This is the Old Testament. How can he be talking about Jesus? And I don't know. The Holy Spirit is working through him, and he's just there. Listen. Be still and know that I am God. Listen to the peace in that sentence. Be still. We are four weeks, four weeks from Advent, and we're going to hear the words that Jesus is the Prince of Peace. We are going to hear that Jesus is Emmanuel, God with us. And isn't that exactly what this psalm is talking about? That God is with us and He will be free peace. He is Jesus who is going to dwell with us. And as the psalmist goes on, he says, I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted on the earth. And that means, that literally means that He will be lifted up. 
And isn't that exactly what Jesus was when he died on the cross? He was lifted up off of the earth when he was nailed to the tree where everyone could see him and he was hung. And he died for the sins of the world. He was exalted and in that moment, even the centurion, the pagan centurion at the foot of his cross cried out and said, truly this man is the son of God. In that moment he was exalted and everyone knew his name. This psalmist right here brings us to Christ. That our salvation is in Christ. Our fortress is Christ. And we are His body, the church. Jesus truly was crucified for the forgiveness of sins. And we know that we, in Christ, have that forgiveness. We know that in Christ, we have the resurrection from the dead. And we know that through Christ's resurrection, He will restore this chaotic and broken world to a new, perfect, beautiful creation. And we know that in Christ's exaltation, He gave up His body. And through His resurrection, He claimed victory over sin and death and the devil for us. And He became a mighty fortress for His body, His people, the church. Amen. And now may the peace of God which surpasses all human understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus now and forever. Amen.